This is a great project, marble inside a wooden block. As you can see right there, there's a marble stuck inside of that block. Um, and the marble can't get out or get in, so it's kind of a tricky tricky project. Um, the diameter of that marble is less than the diameter of that hole, but it still fits in there, and I'll show you how. So first thing you want to do is get your wooden block. This cube is one and a half by one and a half by one and a half. Really important that you use the softwood with pretty open grain. Pine's kind of the best. Um, this is actually fir, but pine would probably work the best. After I have my one and a half inch cube, I draw hypotenuse in this right triangle. Hypotenuse in this right triangle, and that gives me the center spot on my block. Then you need to find a, a ball bearing or a marble, whatever you could find. I'm going to check the diameter of the ball bearing. And this ball bearing is exactly 0.75, but I'm checking with my dial caliper to a thousandth of an inch. So even though the diameter is 0.75, I include that zero to say it's accurate to 750 thousandths of an inch. If I take that number, the diameter of my ball bearing, divide it by the square root of two, that's the size a hole could be. So I do 750 thousandths of an inch divided by the square root of two, two and I get 530 thousandths of an inch. So I could actually drill this hole 530 thousandths of an inch and the ball bearing will fit inside of that. Um, and it's because of our famous isosceles right triangle here. Isosceles means these two legs are congruent, so the angles opposite them are congruent. And then if I use Pythagorean theorem, where I just know that 1 squared plus 1 squared is root 2 squared. So it's always those ratios in isosceles, right? Um, the reason why that's the case, why I could go down to this small of a bit, is as I drill a hole through that block, Right, and I make this whole diameter 0.53, this whole diameter 0.53. When that block sits right in the middle there, this could be its largest dimension. So if I did 0.53 squared plus 0.53 squared, I get 0 0.750 squared. Kind of cool, cool use of the isosceles right triangle. Um, so that would make it a perfect snug fit, but I'm actually going to increase it quite a bit to say 0 0.670 or 670 thousandths of an inch and that way my marble is going to rattle around inside the block a little bit. So 670 thou divided by 750 thou is about 90 percent um, and that will give the marble a little more playroom in there. So let's go ahead and draw it in Mastercam. Okay, we're in Mastercam. I got a machine type router, Techno Servo, brings up Property Manager. My stock setup, I want it in the center of my block. My y axis is one and a half. That's a cube. X is one and a half, and Z is one and a half inches. I want to see that block, it's right there to see it. I hit F9 to see my crosshairs. I'm going to create a rectangle starting at the origin. And I'm going to go over one and a half inches and up one and a half inches, snap in the first quadrant, and then this is fit screen. What I'll do from there is I'm going to create a line um, from corner to corner, just like I did when I drew that box. And I'm going to move this center of this to the origin. So X form, move to origin, clear colors, fit screen. And we'll delete that line. Now I'm going to create a circle or an arc from a center point. I'm going to snap right on the origin. And remember, I wanted that diameter to be 0 0.670. So pull this 0 0.670. And there's a hole I'm going to drill in there. That's kind of it for all of the geometry of drawing. Now I'll toolpath it. I'm going to do it as a pocket. So toolpath pocket, uh, there's my pocket, 
I'm going to use a quarter inch flat end mill to drill this. Go about 60-30. My feed rate is 60, plunge rate at 30, usually half that of your feed rate. Um, I do want to do some depths of cut here, lessen the diameter of the bit. So I'll set my depth of cut to 0.2. And then the all these on, on the actual depth you're going are all absolute. And I'm going to call this a negative um, 0.6 or so. A little bit less than half because I'm going to come in on all sides. So there's my geometry, then I toolpath it, make sure you save the file, and then um, actually before we post it, let's verify it in isometric fit screen view. And there's my pocket. Okay, then what I want to do is I want to post this um, to numeric code. And I've taken all this information and convert it into numeric code and this is what the CNC router is going to run. So let's go run it. Fixed stream is a big part of this project. So I built a frame in there and then I clamped my board making sure that it's out of the way of the CNC. Let's go ahead and run the one side. Running the fifth side here. Uh, I actually also use a little bit of double-sided tape besides my clamps. Uh, it's kind of cool. I have five of the sides drilled out, but if you look in there, you could just see this square prism inside of there, and then when I drill through this side, it'll pop out. Kind of cool how you could create something square by cutting circles. So there's my block all cut out on six sides. And you can see there's my ball bearing that there's no way it'll fit in there. Um, so the key is that you soak this overnight in hot water and then you gently in a vise push this through and you want to go through the end grain. So you want to have it on the end grain and then you're going to gently push that through in a vise and let it dry as slowly as possible. So soaking the block um, lets it swell quite a bit and become pliable and then when it dries it goes back to its original shape. Um, I actually first saw this project on Instructables, um, not with the CNC router but with the drill press. Um, so I hope you enjoy it.